Hi, my name is Rob Zeitman. I'm the assistant head football coach at uh, Ferris State University. Appreciate the opportunity to be here. I want to thank the Glazer Clinics for having me here today. And it's a special privilege to represent Ferris State here in Grand Rapids in front of so many of, uh, of our colleagues and friends as many of our coaches uh, have coached uh, previously in the high school level here in Grand Rapids. And it's great to be here and, and to have uh, this overwhelming support. Thanks for very, coming. Uh, very excited about the accomplishments of Ferris State football in the last three years under Coach Anise. Uh, we're 26 and 8. We're, Ferris was 12 and 21 prior to his arrival. We're the 2014 undisputed GLIAC champs, the first solo champions in four or five years, and the first Ferris State football champions in 18 General years. General offensive philosophies want to stay ahead. Uh, of our defensive game plan, or of our def of our opponent's defensive game plan, sorry, play selection and the construction of the system is based on take what the defense gives us. That puts a lot of pressure on our staff in terms of preparing for eventualities that may or may not come and to kind of use um, past game plans and, and, and employ them from week to week. Uh, that means we have to identify and attack the vulnerabilities of a defense, not only in the structure, but also in the personnel. And we have to have contingencies uh, to take advantage of all situations the defense presents uh, within our offensive arsenal. Always have the option to run the option. We want to have the ability to read a player and make him be wrong 100% of the time. That's kind of our, of our deal. That's what we firmly believe in. It could be a run-pass option. Uh, what we call dual reads. It could be a double option play where we're reading a guy and either running here or running there. Uh, it could be a triple option play um, where we're you know either giving the ball or keeping the ball and then pitching it or throwing it you know off of that. So uh, there's a number of different ways we can run the option, and certainly you know we want to be able to the do offensive that. line. Uh, and this is a big one for us. Obviously for me, I coach the offensive line. Be physical off the ball, flat back, strike and drive. Never show your numbers on run blocks. We want our guys to be athletic. And not only do we recruit guys who we want to be athletic, but we also practice their athleticism. Now we're going to get into some no-huddle stuff, uh, which is kind of the first part of that topic. Reasons not to huddle. We don't have the inherent problems that come with a huddle. So, number one, players don't have to remember terminology. Uh, learning is compartmentalized. These are all educational principles. I mean, you know, we spent, you know, Coach Nice was a, head high school coach for 28 years. I spent 17 years in high school football as a coach and a teacher. Uh, we determine the tempo of the game. The play is called, determined by information obtained. Um, and that information is obtained either by the coaches in the box, the coaches on the sidelines, or that quarterback behind center. And we can utilize multiple formations. How no huddle helps us. us. Practice pace increased dramatically. Uh, when we went to the no huddle, our drill work is more efficient. Because we have to practice, we have to essentially, you know, uh, install what we're going to put in in, in those 11-on periods, and we have to don't have very efficient problems that come with the huddle. Our communication system is very effective. No one running in a play and delivering it incorrectly, and that's the old kindergarten game of learning telephone. is compartmentalized. So there's signals for motion and, and blocking schemes and protections and play and play action, perimeter blocking. And route combinations, and then there's the false. We determine we tempo get. of the game. Opponents, two-way players can be fatigued. That's a that's kind of a high school football deal. In college football, you know, our conference has limitations as to how many guys can travel. So if we're playing a home game late in the year, and there's, you know, typically you'll travel, you know, ten defensive linemen or whatever, and, and we know that two of their top guys are hurt. You know, they may be less apt to to substitute those other D linemen because. You know, numbers 8, 9, and 10, you know, used to be 10, 11, and 12. Must be standardized, blitzes and pressures. We don't see a lot of fire zone stuff, uh, particularly when we Play pick call up the determined pace. by information obtained at the line of scrimmage. So we want to know, and, and sometimes our quarterback's figuring this out. Sometimes, you know, our coaching staff's figuring it out. Sometimes it's our offensive line making calls up front. How does the defense line up? What are their techniques? What does their secondary structure look like? Are they too high? Are they one high? Uh, are they flat? Uh, what are their alley defenders doing uh, in terms of being run, primary run defenders? Or How we use multiple formations? formations? We change personnel on the fly. Our coaches see the formation alignment and have time to adjust if it's wrong. Uh, it's it's difficult for our groupings to be matched with defensive substitutions. You know, sometimes they are. 
uh, and and that's fine too. We're not really worried about that, but I know sometimes it, it can be difficult for defense. Implementation of the know huddle attack, use of sign language to communicate all the time. Uh, so we are we are signaling personnel groupings in practice, script all formations in practice. You know you want to have practices or periods where you never repeat a formation. That way you're training them on and off. Play caller does not need to be the formation caller. Okay, and it's probably better that he isn't. Tempo is a game within a game. Setting a high tempo forces players to really know what they're doing. Uh, it really places some some artificial stress on them. Uh, so stress is familiar to these players. Is, is Make every aspect good of practice signal-based. Start practice with a fast break period versus air that is signal-based. Now we're, we're also we're just trying to get in and out of formations and execute plays against air. Put the formations, plays on a script so you know exactly what you're running. So that when you know that way when you're watching on film afterwards, or you know you, you have a chance to kind of quality control. There, there's while a you're couple doing things it. that we have to talk about. There's communication between the players and the coaches. Okay, that's one type of communication. There's communication between the players and the players. That's a second type of communication. Uh, and then there's a communication between coaches. That's a deception third type of is very important. Deceptive in terms of the terms used. Okay, repetitive plays. So if we're running. Inside veer, or we're running power read 18, 20 times in a game, which we've done. Uh, they have to have multiple turns. Uh, otherwise, they're going to know that California is inside veer to the right, or power read to the left, or whatever it is, uh, by the fifth, sixth time. And then, you know, we're going to be out, out of the line. no huddle. Communication to the skilled players is signal based. All skilled players are required to line up and find the signal caller. Okay, whoever that may be. If it's a certain guy holding a card or a guy signaling you. You can figure a system based on numbers that, that will work for you. Or, you know, sometimes you use a series of states. Michigan, Colorado, Kentucky is listed here with blue. Now, if you said, okay, the first state is hot, so that's Michigan, and then the direction would be blue. So it's the same concept as the numbering system with the color serving as a direction. The no-huddle system you create, create a system that's relevant to you and your players. Give them an opportunity to have input. That make practices relevance. fit the no huddle system. Now this is huge, and and this is kind of the key part I think. Um, how we practice a fair state. We're fast play, paced with lots of repetition. It's high energy. It's very competitive. Every player is involved. We try and teach on the run, and obviously in the uh, in the uh, position meeting rooms we're situation oriented, and we never practice structure. Ever our typical practice plan, as you see, there's a pre practice period. There's a flex period. Uh, there's a bulldog blitz, which is you know a, a team agility period. We get into team tempo. Team tempo is is a great period, which I'll show you uh, in a few minutes. Where you know we get an 11 on 11, and for the defense, it's just a it's just a pursuit drill. For the offense, it's uh, it's a no huddle tempo period. Uh, we get into the fundamentals, one on one inside run, and uh, you see where uh, inside run plays. You know there's scripted plays, which we'll signal. And then you get the one-on-one -on -one period, and you see where it says TA signaling. So, you know, we've kind of designated Here's some that. some practice stuff. Team tempo, a drill done every day that concentrates on perimeter plays for the offense while providing the defense with a pursuit drill. This is not a full contact drill, and you'll see it. Here we have some video of, of our quarterback kind of going through here and, and working see this. See how we're moving just as fast as we can. Now we'll switch groups, and a new group of 11 drill. will be up there. Done every day is one-on-ones. Allows the defense to work man coverage and the offensive skilled players to work getting off the ball. Skelly and man Now, it gives us the ability to work past concepts in specific situations. So here's red zone, Skelly. Now we're moving the chains. So we have chains there. We're going to move the chains and uh, and see what we can do. Half line period. Defense. This period gives us the ability to drill core plays like inside veer power read and jet zone read. Here it is from the end zone angle. Now all we're doing is we're trying to run inside veer, and we've got a half line over here. We've got a half line on the other side. So as soon as they run the play on this side, then we turn around and have them run the play on this side. We've got both sides ready to go. We're just working. We put the ball on the 15. It gives us the, the width of an entire field as if we're in the middle of the field. All we're trying to do is work uh, as fast. In terms of working the run game at a, at a fast clip. Situations. You know, we talk about, this is one of my favorites. Uh, we'll, Coach Anise will pull two players aside and say, hey, look, you know, we'll be in the middle of a drill, and I want you guys to start a fight with each other like you're going to fight each other. And I want to see it, and I want it to look realistic. And he'll do it, 
And he wants to see how the rest of our team is going to react. We do two-minute drills. We do third-down scrimmages and overtime games. We do tough territory and then goal line offense. Are basically we'll run a third-down scrimmage where we'll kick off from the minus 25. We'll be the first play. It'll be third and 12. Then we'll punt. Situational scrimmage. Start each drive with a kickoff. Drive after the kickoff mentality. So mentality for the offense is you got to move the ball because the opponent just scored. Or beginning of the half, mentality for the defense is the offense just scored, so we have to capture okay. the momentum. Tough territory, put the ball on the one-yard line and try to get a first down, so we got 99 yards to go. If you give up a safety, be prepared to do the next play, kicking or punting from the 20. If you get to fourth down, punt the ball back. Goal line situations, we go from the 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. We get one play, essentially, so it's third and goal, and then we do the two-point conversion play. Um, we do that separate because you know we want everybody to know the relevance and significance of, of that. Uh, tough territory from the 5, offense gets a point. If we get two first downs, if not, the defense gets a point. So these are special situation scrimmages. So that would be the first situation. Sixth is it's third and sixth, then we've got to get a first down uh-huh. and one That's down. That's kind of where we go in terms of no huddle and try, how we try and implement it in our in our practice and, and how we, we weave those situations in uh, in terms of no huddle. I hope uh, everything's better. Uh, in terms of your understanding of this topic, if not, you know, please give me a contact at at the email address you saw on the first slide. I appreciate your time, and uh, and thank you.